Hello everybody, welcome back to another video. <clears throat> I'm hoping you guys are all having a fantastic day. So today's upload, as you can tell by the title and what we have right here, is my preliminary hurricane season outlook 2019. So uh, last year I uploaded one and it, it seemed fairly popular. So uh, I decided to do another one, uh, it for, except for the year 2019. I want to do a little disclaimer here. This is by no means should be your forecast and on whether deciding on how to prepare for the hurricane season. You need to always be prepared because last year's hurricane season was supposed to be a little bit around average, maybe a little bit below average, slightly above depending on which source you looked at. And it turned out to be way above. I mean, we had Hurricane Michael, Hurricane Florence, we had Tropical Storm Alberto that like came in really early May 25th before even hurricane season started. So this year is very similar except there are, you know, maybe it's it's very uh, similar uh, confidence level, so we could be looking at another extreme hurricane season, or we could not be, and I'll explain in this video. Before we get in any further, um, if you'd like to subscribe to this channel, you could do so just by hitting the red subscribe button down below. It uh, really helps my channel uh, grow, and it gives me a kind of a gauging measurement on whether you highlight how you like this video or not how you like my channel uh, if you want to show how you like this video you can also like this video and you can also leave a nice comment so let's get into this uh you may be wondering why am i looking at the enso outlook well the enso outlook uh you know may not seem too important when uh, when we're talking about the hurricane season probabilities and the prediction but it is actually a uh, fairly impactful on the hurricane season and we are looking, as you could see, and we are currently in, and we were already in for a couple of months, in a El Nino uh, phase of the ENSO. So you can see, stated right here, El Nino conditions, sorry about that, are favored to continue through fall 2018 with diminishing chances through October, November, December. So um, as of the next couple of months, I think through July, we are most likely to be in El Nino, as you can see marked by this. Uh, this is July, August, September. Even through August, I think we'll most likely be in an El Nino. However, notice how they're saying with diminishing chances. Uh, we could be going into a neutral or, or a La Nina. Last year, we had an above average season. And if you just type in uh, Atlantic Hurricane Season 2018, you'll see it pops up above average hurricane season with above average tropical storm names. The intensity of the major storms was beyond um, average, and it was a neutral, uh, and we, we might be going into a neutral towards September, October, November, and as we know, or if you're into hurricanes, you do know that September, October, November is typically the most active season, or the most active part of the season. We definitely still get hurricanes and uh, tropical storms through uh, June, July, and even May, possibly, and August, but September, October, November are like the very active periods, and August as well. Um, so we could be looking at a neutral for that um, time frame, but as of now, um, the beginning will be an El Nino. So you may be wondering, how does this on Earth even impact uh, the, the, the hurricanes and El Nino? Well, this is what I pulled up. It's a nice little... Okay, it's a nice little graphic that shows us what a typical El Nino influence does on the ocean. The Atlantic Ocean and the Pacific, we also have here the East Pacific. Um, little side note, last year the East Pacific Ocean was insanely active as well. Uh, it was just ridiculous. We had so many th major hurricanes. We had Buddy, we had, I think, uh, Hurricane Bud, sorry, and then we had Hurricane... Uh, that, was, that was like the B1, the A, I forgot what it was, but it was... It was a lot. There was a lot. It was a very active season, and Hawaii just kept getting pummeled by Hector. I think there was another one that got hit by. I just keep forgetting its name. And uh, this is what El Nino does: more hurricanes in the East Pacific. So another, you know, another active season for East Pacific, but possibly if this, you know, comes just based on an El Nino factor, and fewer hurricanes in the Atlantic due to stronger vertical wind shear and trade winds and greater atmospheric stability. So with an El Nino, the the ocean is more predictable. Uh, there are some more wind shear uh, sources available, and that just shears up the environment. Does not allow. It's not very favorable for hurricanes at all. And um, that's with just an El Nino, but again, just last year, we were supposed to uh, go, um, we were supposed to start off as neutral and go into an El Nino, 
Um, but the El Nino was delayed and we just saw hurricane after hurricane after hurricane develop. So last year's hurricane season was, you know, unpredictable, like every year hurricane season is. And this uh, hurricane season was starting off with an El Nino and, you know, it may go away faster than we think. So uh, that may lead to a active August, September, October time frame. By then, by then we could have a neutral pattern going again. And based on the previous observations I have made myself, a neutral pattern leads to a fairly active hurricane season. So let's go to um, my next little graphic. This is basically just shows us uh, again what the models are showing. Uh, these are like the little models that they use. I mean, these are ridiculous. Uh, there's so many of them. I would not be able to know even half of them. But again, we have the Canadian right here, the CMC. We have the European, the ECMWF. Uh, we have an Australian model right there. We have the GEM, uh, GMA, the Amstack, and we also have I think the GFS was definitely among some of. Um, we have the GFDL. Uh, but the main ones that I like to look at is a CPC console, so Climate Prediction Center, DYN average, and a statistical average. So you can see they're all on the same page. None of them are going, you know, into at a La Nina phase. All of them are either in an El Nino phase or neutral. And a neutral would be 0 0.5 to negative 0 0.5. And you can see August, September, October, September, October, November. It starts uh, declining a bit. And this could still change. I mean, we are out here. And this is this was made from April 2019. So we could uh, definitely still be, you know, uh, this could change and this could go into far neutral or into a strong El Nino or like a stronger than predicted El Nino, which would leave us with a, uh, with a hurricane season that um, would be weaker if we had a strong El Nino for sure. We've seen that in the 2016-2015 El Nino when uh, that hurricane season was not... Uh, you know, wasn't above average. It was definitely had its hurricanes and storms, but it wasn't as these past three years have been, uh, 2017, 2018, and 2017, uh, uh, 2018, 2017, 2016. But the 2015, 2016 one were uh, too, uh, you know, too bad. It was the past two ones that were just really above average. So, uh, again, this is what uh, I want to show you. This is not what they're predicting right now. This is what they show. Show it, I think. Uh, I think this was, when was this? Okay, this was as of um, May, so this is when I was making the hurricane outlook, but for last year. And you could see that they were predicting by August, September, October, September, uh, October, November, they were predicting an El Nino by then. And, uh, or at least an El Nino favorable, so you could see El Nino just, uh, you know, favorable through the Northern Hemisphere summer, but neutral, but then an El Nino possibly, um, you know, could overcome, and that that changed. I mean, the El Nino was way delayed. It didn't even develop until I think like Mar or January or February of this year. So you, that just goes to show you how things could change. Um, if there was a La Nina, however, you could see a typical La Nina influence is more hurricanes due to weaker vertical wind shear and trade winds, so less atmospheric stability and fewer hurricanes in the. Eastern Pacific, but as of now, it does not seem likely that an El Nino will form at all. It's between a weak El Nino, a stronger El Nino, or a neutral, which in the past two years has been present in a hurricane season and has led to an active um, season. So uh, this is what they showed. Uh, I think this is, uh, I'm looking at this. This is what they showed in around uh, summer, or no, this is what they showed when I was making the uh, the, the the outlook for uh, the hurricane season last year, and you could see they were all showing by August, September, October, September, August, no, uh, October, November, all showing a, uh, a a you know a fairly strong indice, indication that we will be looking into a uh, a a at least a neutral or or an El Nino, and it turned out to be a neutral, and the El Nino did not form even um, in any of this phase. It stayed neutral, I would say, up to here. Um, and maybe finally cross that line, that 0 0.5 degree uh, line of difference. And uh, this is actually, you can see there's like a little uh, bar line. This is a video that I made uh, in terms of the winter. And I just want to show you this, um, these past couple of slides, I've been showing you how this could change. Because look, ENCO neutral was uh, favored through July through September. And uh, this then it changed. Uh, and you can see decreasing to... Uh, it, it changed into an El Nino, so this was a complete flip around and was not expected. Okay, the video will pause right here. I apologize for that. And we are back on. So, okay, I want to exit out of that. 
I just wanted to show you this that you know they were forecasting a neutral throughout the whole winter. We went into a strong, fairly a uh, strong. Uh, I think it was a, a, a La Nina, so that definitely was you know uh, a definite change. And uh, why can't I go forward? Okay, let's go. This is basically just the same similar thing. I don't want to waste your time anymore. And you could see that. Uh, this is the sea surface temperature anomalies as of May 11th, which is as I'm recording this video. And, you know, the warmer the waters are, usually the uh, the more active the hurricane season is. However, that's not always direct because that's only one of the factors and there are many factors like I just showed you. And right now, as of now, they are above average. So, that, especially in the Gulf of Mexico. So, you know, that's not too good of a news because usually the hurricanes or tropical storms, systems, cyclones, um, depressions develop in the Gulf of Mexico region, um, especially early on, early on in May and June. So, with it being above average here, uh, we could be looking at uh, you know a, a an, maybe an early start to a hurricane season, but we'll have to wait and see. And this is my final outlook. So, I know it's not a lot; it's not really detailed. I just wanted to share you some thoughts with this. This wasn't even really that much of an outlook. But I'll still call it an outlook because I I can't really make a map like I would make for winter, um you know defining where each hurricane will hit because that's just in impossible to predict. But you can see lots of hurricanes question mark. Uh, they will. Um, I think that th this will this season will be. Uh, I think it will be fairly active. Um, last year I said it will be active and it was active. This year I think maybe not as active as last year, definitely not as active as 2017, 2018, or the 2017 season with Ir Irma and Maria and all those hurricanes. But I do think it will still be fairly active with its fair share of tropical storms and depressions. Um, I don't think it will be below average, not at all. So thank you guys so much for watching, consider subscribing, consider liking the video, and I'll see you guys all on the next episode. See ya!